This is the Coast to Coast Network of the Mutual Broadcasting System. So long as these problems are not solved, so long as ignorance and poverty remain on earth, these words cannot be useless. These are the words which preface the sixth of seven broadcasts based on Victor Hugo's great novel, Les Miserables. WOR and the Mutual Network present Orson Welles, distinguished young author, actor, and director, in an adaptation of the book which he has created especially for radio. Each episode portrays some development in the progress of Jean Valjean, a role played by Orson Welles, who is also heard as he reads the narrative passages. Les Miserables. The story of Jean Valjean and Inspector Javert. The episode which is called The Barricade. Official order delivered under seal, March 9th, 1821. Inspector Javert will seize the body of Monsieur Madeleine, the mayor of Montreux, who has identified himself this day in court as the discharged convict. Jean Valjean. Six times from the galleys, twice from the double chain and twice from under my grasp. Last night he escaped from me. We had him, my men and I, and he gave us the slip. Then we had him again. We hunted him through the city. His flight was embarrassed by the child, Cosette, whom he carried in his arms. We were on every side of him. The walls were too high to climb. He was surrounded. He was trapped in a closed and guarded street. And he disappeared. Jean Valjean has escaped. 1832. Sedition. Mutiny. Rebellion. These are dangerous times. Never before has the vandalism and the lawlessness of the mob had such reign. The very government is in peril. And there are whispers of another revolution in France. We of the police are wakeful and vigilant. Here in Paris, the riotings of the people, led by some party of young fanatics, has grown to downright insurrection. And I have today intelligence of a barricade to be erected in a certain section of the city. True or no, this rumor is worthy of attention. And I'm going there in disguise to mingle with the revolutionaries. Today, June 6th, is the anniversary of Jean Valjean's escape. It's the date of my failure as a police officer. Thirty years now I've been in this service. All this time, I've devoted to police duty the strictest honesty and watchfulness and discipline. I've given it my mind, my heart and my hope. I've made it my whole life. But so long as this man, Valjean, remains alive and free in the world... My purpose is thwarted. My honor is a joke. For this Jean Valjean has become a principle in the order of my code. He is all that must be checked. He is crime. Worse than that, he is license. It's 12 years since I've seen him. I shall see him again. I shall know him when I see him. And he shall not escape. Once Valjean forgave me, I shall not forgive him. Cosette. Cosette, is something wrong? Cosette! Yes? May I come in? Yes, Father. <laughs> My little one, you haven't stirred from your room this whole day. Now tell me something. What's on that pretty cheek? I don't know. Well, I do. It's a tear, and it has no business there. You've been weeping a great deal. Tell me, what for? For him. What's his name? Marius. Marius Pomerci. Tell me about him. You've never seen him, Father. We met at the Luxembourg. He's going to be killed. Father, why have they made that barricade? For protection, street? my child. It's a, it's a kind of fort for the revolutionaries. Marius is at the barricade. How do you know? He was a rebel. He pledged himself to the insurrection. He told me that. When did you see him last? I haven't seen him at all for two months. We used to meet in the garden of the old house, and I... I was afraid to tell you. He may not be at the barricade. 
I got this letter. It came this morning. Let me see, little one. To Mademoiselle Cosette Fauchelevent, Monsieur Fauchelevent's Rue Lame, number seven. Our marriage was impossible. I have asked my grandfather. He has refused. I am without fortune, and you also. You know the promise that I gave you. I keep it. I die. I love you. When you read this, my soul will be near you. Marius. They say that the soldiers from the government have brought cannon and aimed them at the barricade. That will end it. All day I've sat here, listening. When I hear the first cannon, I'll know surely that he's dead. <laughs> Do you wish to speak to us? Surrender quietly and perish your prisoner and we'll give you fair trial. It is you who are on trial. Give up your prisoner, the police inspector. What are your terms? Our prisoner is not a hostage. He is a spy. A policeman who masqueraded as one of us. He will be executed before the last of us. We have no terms. Sound the discharge! <laughs> Hey, come on here. I'll hold the north barricade. You, comrade. Yes, Marius. Go behind the tavern wall. Our prisoner, the police spy, is tied back there to a table. Shoot him. Yes, Marius. Goodbye. Goodbye, Marius. Goodbye, Marius. That's a brave man, comrade. Yes, that's a brave man. He has no fear of death. It's almost as though he were in love with her. There's one whom Marius loves more than death. He must be safe for her. Indeed? And who, who are you? I am her father. The father of Cosette? What, what are you doing here? How did you get into the barricade? No matter. I've come to save your comrade. He must not know that I'm here. Sound the discharge! <laughs> Monsieur. Yes? Will you hold this position for me? I have orders from Marius. I must go execute the spy. Who is the spy? A police inspector who impersonated a revolutionary and was caught here on the barricade. I am to shoot him. A police inspector? Yes, monsieur. His name is Javert. Let me shoot him. What, monsieur? Let me shoot him. You hold the post. I'll take care of the spy. Oh, very well, if you wish it. I wish it. Where is he? Where is Javert? Around the corner of the street, monsieur. Tied up behind the wall. Down the shot! Jean Valjean. Javert. I might have expected this. To find you here amongst vandals and insurrectionists. Amongst cutthroats and destroyers of public property. God, this is as it should be. Well, well, hurry up, hurry up. I'm tied. You've got a gun. Justice is chained and the convict is free. Go on, Jean Valjean. You've got a gun. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Jean Valjean, why did you fire that gun in the air? Why didn't you shoot me? Have you got a knife? I knew it. Assassin. Where is your knife? In the side pocket of my coat. Assassin. Knifer. I knew you'd use a knife. You're cutting my ropes. You're cutting my ropes. Why are you doing that? Well, I'm free. But I'm unarmed. Take your revenge. You may go. What do you mean? The back streets are open. You're known to the army. They'll recognize you and you'll be safe. There's none here but us. You fool. Let me go and I'll get you. You know that. Alive or dead. I'll get you. I don't expect to leave this place. But if I should, you can find me under the name of Fauchelevent in the Rue de Lame, number seven. Fauchelevent. Rue de Lame. 
don't you kill me. Number seven. Number seven. I'll come for you. I'll be waiting. It is the story of the barricades that it fell at this moment. Everywhere was the terrible confusion of death and defeat. Jean Valjean found Marius unconscious, horribly wounded, covered with blood but still breathing. He threw the boy on his shoulder and ran to the far end of the street. But for the silent dead of the insurrection, this place was deserted. Here was peace but no safety. Here was silence and no exit. Here were no walls to climb, no passageways, no alleys. Here was a momentary island in the midst of the armies of France. Twelve years before, Jean Valjean had been hunted down and trapped in a closed street. The child, Cosette, was in his arms. Now he carried her lover. He had looked up that night and seen the rope of a street lamp and found safety. Now he looked down and found there at his feet an iron door in the pavements. With Javert's own knife, he pried open the grating. In another instant, he had lowered Marius and himself through this opening and was under the streets. Jean Valjean was in the sewers. Paris has another Paris under herself. A Paris of sewers which has its streets, its squares, its blind alleys and its circulation, which is slime. The sewer is the conscience of the city. In this lurid place there is darkness, but there are no secrets. Underneath these vaults we breathe the enormous fetidness of social catastrophe. We see reddish reflections on the corners. There flows a terrible water in which bloody hands have been washed. It was in the sewer of Paris that Jean Valjean found himself. In a moment, he had passed from broad day to obscurity, from noon into midnight. He was waiting in the hideous muck of the city. His first sensation was blindness. He reached out his hand and touched the wall on one side then on the other, and realized that the passage was narrow. He slipped in the water, a whip of fetidus, informed him where he was. The frenzied storm of murder which was raging a few feet above him reached him only as a stifled and indistinct rumbling. From the flashing whirl of the combat to this cavern of miasmas and pitfalls, after chaos, the cloaca, Jean Valjean had fallen from one circle of hell into another. He advanced one step at a time, fearing a hole, a pit, or some gulf. Marius' arms were pressed about his neck. Only a thin, warm trickle of blood from his mouth indicated that he was still alive. There was no thought of resting. He plunged on, feeling his way through the stinking corridors, the foul water rising above him, the darkness deeper than ever. But this depth assured him. And then all at once he saw before him his own shadow. Jean Valjean turned around. He could distinguish a police patrol. They were searching for him, hunting him down. But had they seen him in that brief flash of the lantern, he could hear their voices. I can hear it, I tell you. Listen. Not a sound. I heard footsteps. You can see for yourself there's nothing there. Well, I heard something. In the distance, the group of black fawns sank away. They were going back. He was safe. Slowly, as the ruddy glare of the lantern disappeared, the silence became deep again, and blindness and deafness resumed possession of the dark. He started again. The advance became more and more laborious. There was mist, there was miasma, and there was darkness. Marius, dead perhaps, weighed heavily upon him. Then suddenly, Jean Valjean had reached an angle of the sewer, and he saw before him at the extremity of the passage a light. This time it was not the terrible ruddy light of the police. It was a good and white light. It was day. He saw the outlet. He felt exhaustion no more. He felt Marius' weight no longer. He ran rather than walked. He reached the outlet. There he stopped. The arch was closed by a grating. A grating held in a stone frame by a stout lock. The grating did not stir. Its lock held fast. 
And suddenly Jean Valjean knew that a man was there standing beside him, waist deep in the water. A man standing in the darkness. I've been waiting for you. It was Javert. You got here sooner than I expected. Inspector Javert? Yes, Jean Valjean. Grant me one favor. This boy is dying. Before you take me to prison, help me to carry him to his home. There's a carriage waiting on the beach. You are silent, Javert. I should think you would be happy. I must thank you for helping me to take that wounded boy to his family. They will be grateful to you. Javert. Yes? I'm going to ask you something more. Something I know you won't permit. Cosette. I've been with her all these years. She's, she's very dear to me. May I say goodbye to her? Driver. The Rue de l'Armée. Number seven. Well, here's your home. Go up and see her. What are you waiting for? I'm waiting for you. I'll be here, below in the street. Then, then you trust me? I'll wait in the street. Jean Valjean ran up the stairway to Cosette's little room. He stopped at the landing and looked back through the window. He was bewildered by what he did not see. There was nobody in the street. Javert was gone. What was the story of Javert? Javert made his way with slow steps from the Rue de Lame. He plunged into the silent streets. Still, he followed one direction. He took the shortest route toward the Seine. There had been a new thing, a revolution, a catastrophe in the depths of his being. One thing had astonished him, that Jean Valjean had spared him. And one thing had petrified him, that he, Javert, had spared Jean Valjean. Where was he? He sought himself and found himself no longer. Destiny has certain extremities precipitous upon the impossible and beyond which life is no more than an abyss. Javert was at one of these extremities. Jean Valjean confounded him. All the axioms which had been the support of his whole life crumbled away before this man. A beneficent malefactor, a compassionate convict, kind, helpful, clement, Returning good for evil, returning pardon for hatred, loving pity rather than vengeance, preferring to destroy himself rather than to destroy his enemy, saving him who had stricken him, kneeling upon the height of virtue, nearer the angels than men. Javert was compelled to acknowledge that this monster existed. An entire new world appeared to his soul. He perceived in the darkness the fearful rising of an unknown moral sun. Truth, which he had no wish for, besieged him. 
He saw what he had revolted at seeing. He felt that he was emptied, useless, broken off from his past life, destitute. Authority was dead in him. He had no further reason for existence. There was only two ways to get out of it. One, to go resolutely to Jean Valjean and return the man of the galleys to the dungeon. The other... Javert made his way with a firm step toward the post indicated by a lamp at one of the corners of the Place du Châtelet. On reaching it, he entered. There was a policeman there. Javert gave his name, showed his card to the sergeant, and sat down at the table of the post on which a candle was burning. There was a pen on the table, a leaden inkstand, and some paper in readiness for chance reports and the orders of the night patrol. Javert took the pen and a sheet of paper and began to write. This is what he wrote. From the notebook of Inspector Javert... Some observations for the benefit of the service. First, I beg Monsieur le Préfet to glance at this. Second, the prisoners on their return from examination take off their shoes and remain barefooted upon the pavement while they are searched. Many cough on returning to the prison. This involves hospital expenses. Third, it is difficult to explain why the special regulation of the prison forbids a prisoner to have a chair, even on paying for it. Fourth, the prisoners called barkers who call the other prisoners to the parlor make the prisoner pay them two sous for calling his name distinctly. This is a theft. Fifth, for a dropped thread, they retain ten sous from the prisoner in the weaving shop. This is an abuse on the part of the contractor, since the cloth is just as good. Sixth, it is certain that gendarmes are every day heard relating in the yard of the prefecture the examinations of those brought before the magistrates. For a gendarme who should hold such things sacred to repeat what he has heard in the examining chamber is a serious disorder. Javert, inspector of the first class. June 7th, 1832. About one o'clock in the morning. Javert dried the fresh ink on this paper, folded it very carefully, like a letter, sealed it, wrote on the back a note for the administration, left it on the table, and went slowly out of the post. The glazed and grated door closed behind him. He crossed the Place de Châtelet and gained the key there was darkness, darkness complete. It was that sepulchral and terrible moment which follows midnight. Javert was standing exactly over the rapids of the Seine, perpendicularly over that formidable whirlpool which knots and unknots itself like an endless screw. Javert bent his head and looked. All was black. What was beneath was not water. It was chasm. The wall of the key abrupt, confused, mingled with vapor, suddenly lost to sight, seemed to him like an escarpment of the infinite. Javert, inspector of police. Thirty years in the service of France stood there on that promontory of the darkness, 
and looked into the end of the night. He saw nothing. But he perceived the hostile chill of the water and the insipid odor of the moist stones. A fierce breath rose up from that abyss. The swollen river guessed at rather than perceived the tragical whispering of the flood, the dismal vastness of the arches of the bridge, the imaginable fall into that gloomy void. All that shadow was full of horror. Javert remained for some minutes motionless on that pinnacle in the middle of the midnight, gazing into that opening of darkness. Then suddenly, without a sound, no expression on that great, bearded, beastly face, he took off his hat and laid it on the edge of the key. A moment afterwards, a tall black form appeared standing on the parapet, bent toward the Seine, then sprang up and fell straight into the darkness. It is the last that was ever seen of Inspector Javert. W.O.R. and the Mutual Network have brought you part six of Victor Hugo's absorbing masterpiece, Les Miserables, the episode which was called The Barricade. Orson Welles, distinguished young author, actor, and director, played the role of Jean Valjean and was also heard reading the narrative passages. Assisting Mr. Welles were Martin Gable as Javert, William Johnstone as Marius, Virginia Wells as Cosette, Ray Collins, Hiram Sherman, and others. Next Friday evening at 9.30 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Saving Time, we shall present the seventh and final episode of Les Miserables. is the Coast to Coast Network of the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>